Day in support of immigrants, <laughs> workers' rights, and human rights in general. Everybody shout! Resistance! Resistance! Everybody shout! Resistance! Day and night, must organize the people. Stand against the racist, xenophobic mobs. Who must call out the sexist and harassers? Occupy the White House.
All right, good afternoon, everybody. What a beautiful day for May Day. Um, my name is Carl. For anyone just arriving, I'm with Resist the Deportation Machine Network. And we are here because we are demanding that Essex County break its ties with ICE and shut down the ICE Detention Center. And stop funding our public parks and public places with money from immigrant detentions. All right, so we have a list of speakers and we're going to try and stay to about five minutes, okay? Um, our first speaker right here, you can use my megaphone when you speak. All you have to do is hit the button and that'll make it go loud. Oh, and Alejandro just showed up here with a microphone. All right, so that may be your preferred choice. But uh, let's give a big round of applause for uh, Carol Gay, New Jersey State Industrial Union Council. Thank you. Hey, this works great. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Uh, good to see everybody today on this beautiful May Day. Is this good? Is that, that, you can hear okay? Okay. Uh, the New Jersey Industrial Union Council, the IUC, is here today to echo and support all the demands of the Resist the Deportation Machine. We want to shut it down, right? If they don't release and they don't release detainees, we say shut it down. Shut it down. Uh, we are with you. We are with you in the struggle for justice, for equality, dignity, and respect for all immigrants and all workers, because that is what we deserve. For many, many years, I have said, "Yo quiero un mundo sin fronteras." That's what I want, a world without borders, without walls. Uh, we need bridges, right? Bridges, not walls. So capital has no borders. So why should the workers who are just trying to survive, who are trying to feed their families, who are trying to escape violence, why should there be borders for them? My heart goes out today especially to the caravan from Honduras that is right now down on the U.S.-Mexican border. Right. So, I mean, they're there seeking asylum, right? And we, and asylum from violence, for one thing. And we know, we know what has driven them here. We know, uh, and they've come from their beloved homes, not wanting to leave their beloved homes, but we do know why they're here. One of the main factors is unfair U.S. trade policy. Um, that has deprived so many of a decent living. And another is the violent militarism of U.S. foreign policy. U.S. Um, the U.S. aid, we know where U.S. aid goes. It goes to prop up the military, uh, which only makes it more dangerous to the people, not safer. So we say build bridges, not walls. I, wanted, I, need, I need a prop, just one second. You might wonder that, one, of course, I'm carrying my Bill Bridges, not walls, but uh, you might wonder also why I'm carrying this sign today, everybody's got a right to live, a theme of the poor people's campaign. It doesn't just mean a right to exist. It means the right to live with dignity, peace, and justice. It means everybody has a right to safe housing, quality health care. Everybody has a right to vote to drive to a free education. That's the beauty of the Poor People's Campaign. It brings all of our issues together under one banner. Let's bring all of our voices together in solidarity to demand peace, equality, and justice. Paz, egalidad, y justicia. Justice for immigrants, 
justice for workers around the world, justice for our planet, our precious Mother Earth, justice for all impoverished people. And let's bring all of our voices together to demand peace and equality for all those under attack, under economic attack, under military attack, under environmental attack, under gender attack, and under racial attack. Everybody's got a right to live with dignity and respect and equal opportunity and without fear, without fear, without violence. No hate, no fear. Immigrants are welcome here, no hate, no fear. Immigrants are welcome here, no hate. No fear. Immigrants are welcome here. No fear. Immigrants are welcome here. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. I'll just use the mic, actually. All right. So our next guest, he's one of my very best friends, and he is an anti-car activist and an activist for indigenous rights, and he goes by the name Carlos Carlos. So let's give a big round of applause to him. It's a lovely introduction, Carl. Thank you. And let's forget the car thing for now. Um, I, I want to start off with what, what's down there. I pledge allegiance to liberty and justice for all. Forget all the other garbage in the middle. That's what the human race has got to be about, all right? right. Liberty and justice for all. Um, so I have a lot of anger. Anybody else out there angry? What are you angry about? You name it. Exactly. You name it. All right. There are so many different things dividing us. There are so many different things that are more of an issue for some people and less of the other. But they are all united in the fact that they all stem from colonialism, from the ways humans now treat, treat this planet, this precious planet, that there's going to be nothing to give back to our children. That is what's happening. We're moving dangerously close to extinction. And I wanted to talk more. I had a speech written, but something interrupted it, just like how life is always interrupted by all the things that happen in our world that keep us off balance, that uh, divide the working class, that divide the people from what they really want. And that is the Ramapo up in this state. There's racism going on right now, a policy of Basically, the way Jim Crow used to be is now being implemented in this time. $42,000 a day they're being fined. This is not for money. This is to get their land. And they're using this bullshit party, but it's, it's, it's beyond outrageous. And, you know, I, I hope some other people come and talk about the Ramapo because it's something very relevant, very close to us, and... It's something that uh, is very close to my heart. But to them, I have a chant, and this is how I'm going to end. Um, it comes from a chief known as Dragon Canoe from the Cherokee, and he was a fighter his whole life. This is in the 1700s. And he said, um, we are not yet conquered. So here, everybody with their fists up, please. Repeat after me. We. We. We are. We are. We are not. We are not. We are not yet conquered. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Carl, for having me up here. Appreciate it, brother. All right. Thank you, Carlos. That was awesome. And with some more speakers, I just wanted to say that we are here to support you all as American citizens. ICE cannot touch us as citizens, and we will defend you. We are looking to build rapid response networks in our communities so we can come out and we can make sure nobody is deported, nobody is illegal, and we can create a real world without borders. All right. And uh, before... Oh, that was loud. Before you all go today, too, we want to continue this conversation with you all. I hope um, you can sign or sign up, give us your name and email, so we can be in contact with you as Resistant Deportation Machine, and we can help build these networks to protect each other. Uh, my next speaker, we have up Father Jack Martin from the Haiti Solidarity Network. Let's give him a big hand.
happy to be here. And uh, RDM is a powerful group. It's, uh, you know, resist the deportation movement. I love it. And, uh, you know, they were just here and uh, having a, a public action again. Um, this is about the fourth one that's been part of RDM, and, and there'll be more. Uh, uh, so I'm happy to be part of it. Uh, as was mentioned, I'm, I'm with the uh, Haiti Solidarity Network. And you know, it's terrible. A lot of Haitian uh, immigrants who had to flee after the, um, after the earthquake in 2010, they went to Brazil because workers were needed to get ready for the, uh, the um, what do you call it? Olympics. The Olympics, yes. And uh, now that the Olympics are over, because an awful lot of them have no work, so they came across the border of Mexico, and too many of them wound up in Hudson County Jail. And a number of them have been deported, and I mean, send them back to Haiti, which is still trying to recover from the uh, earthquake, and, and now is, has raging cholera there. But uh, that, that's where you would want to send uh, your friends, right? Hello? <laughs> it's a shame, it's sad. One other thing I want to mention, I had the privilege of uh, working uh, as in the missions in Central America for five years. And I was in a UN refugee camp with Salvadorans who fled into Honduras. And I heard so many of the stories about what happened to those Salvadorans. You know, they saw their brother killed, they saw their grandfather uh, hanged, they saw so many people shot. That it was terrible. And uh, the more you hear about it, you realize that all of this was being done with U.S. weapons. And, um, and then here in the U.S., we wonder why these people uh, leave their, their home and come here because, you know, there's really no hope for them there. I was telling them, you know, if you, you were a father and you weren't trying to find a, some better place than El Salvador to raise your children, I would wonder how much you cared about your children. But most of us in the United States don't understand that they are forced to leave their countries because of an awful lot of it is because what the U.S. foreign policy did to their country. So it's a good thing that we're here to, to speak up, you know, and uh, I love being part of Posecha. Another group I, I belong to is called the uh, uh, New Jersey Clergy Coalition for Justice, and we're focused now on Black Lives Matter. And, you know, when people say, well, Black Lives Matter, all lives matter, Blue Lives Matter. And I say, you're right, they all matter. But the point of this is that even Black Lives Matter. Hello, a surprise? Yeah, that's the point of Black Lives Matter. Even Black Lives Matter. So, um, anyway, it's great to be with you today. El Pueblo Unido. Jamás será vencido. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. All right. Thank you, Father Jack. Good. Our next speaker in the yellow sweatshirt, we have Larry Adams of the People's Organization for Progress. Let's give him a big hand. Power to the people. Long live international solidarity. Long live international solidarity. Long live international solidarity. On behalf of the People's Organization for Progress, I bring greetings of solidarity with the assembled forces celebrating our day, May Day, the day of solidarity of the international working class. We salute the organizers of this demonstration, Resist the Deportation Machine Network, and support the demands for all who live in this country, equal rights, the right of quality, free education, health care, transportation, housing, clean energy, the right to good jobs and living wages. And with you, we demand to close the Essex County ICE concentration camp. But on May Day, we would be remiss, and we must add demands for this demonstration that we raise, and I hope that you would unite with them. First and foremost, we demand an end to all imperialist wars and victory to all forces in the world who are fighting for the liberation of oppressed and exploited peoples, nations, and countries, and all imperialist wars. We workers in the belly of the beast have a particular responsibility to our comrades around the world. It is the government of our country 
that leads the oppressive system of imperialism and it's the boot on the necks of the peoples of the world. We who are in the belly of the beast have particular responsibility if we uphold our internationalist obligation to oppose and expose and oppose the war making of the government of our country. I won't say our government, but the government of our country. We demand an end to the wars on black America, on brown America, on the indigenous people of this country. We demand equality and uplift of women who uphold half the sky. There must be an end to misogyny in this society. With you, we celebrate the solidarity and achievements of the international working class and unite with you in struggle against our common enemy, imperialism, which is led by U.S. imperialism. Though born in the U.S. and spread throughout the world and sustained by the workers' movement, the socialist movement, and the communist movement worldwide, it's been immigrant workers in this country who have particularly played a leading role in, in regenerating the celebration of the Workers' Day. And for that service, we give particular accolades for helping to raise this class consciousness of the working class of this country. Right. Immigrant workers have played a big role in that task. Right. Yes. That is, after years of suppression by the ruling class and their opportunist agents, in the movement of the workers and oppressed peoples. Together, <laughs> together we seize the day and celebrate labor. We create all the wealth, and with you we will struggle for the power to determine how it is spent and for whom it is spent. Down with the 1%, up with the 99 The situation today seems bleak. Imperialism, their system is in crisis, and their response is to put it on the backs of the masses of people at home and abroad. They give us shredded social safety nets, austerity, police repression, underemployment. Their response will only result in a lessening of the quality of life for everyone who lives in this country. Native, citizen, non-citizen, it means nothing unless you're part of the 1%. There's a neo-fascist in the White House who thrives on promoting U.S. chauvinism and white supremacy. Politically surviving on an anti-immigrant offensive in particular. But POP is rooted in the black freedom struggle. That's it. And although we are alleged citizens, we'll never be succumb, we'll never succumb or be seduced by the lure of American chauvinism because our history is a history of struggle against being the other. It's just today, our immigrant brothers and sisters are the other of the day. And we will stand together, shoulder to shoulder, to fight for equality, dignity, and justice for all who live in this country. Because we understand the dynamic of push and pull, that the oppressive conditions in the, in the native countries, particularly of the South, that was the so-called big background, backyard of the United States, that the push out of those countries is because of the domination of the politics, the economics, and in particular, the military. The dangerous situation is created by influx of U.S. arms, the, the, the drug trade that's promoted by the U.S. market, that that's the push. The pull is the, is the illusion that the streets here are paved with gold. Only thing that we can promise is another venue for struggle. And what we can promise is the POP will stand and struggle with you. Trump's deafening beating of the drums of war threatens the world. The efforts at creating anti-Russian hysteria, the, allegate, the, the promotion of war against North Korea and Iran and Palestine and Yemen, points to the wisdom of Dr. Martin Luther King's assessment. 
that it is his, the government of his country that is the greatest purveyor of violence in the world. But when they say cut back, we say fight back. When they say get back, we say fight back. Though the enemy attacks, there are green shoots of resistance. And we are here to celebrate them today. The immigrants' rights movement is growing and is gaining allies every day. Teachers in the most conservative states in the country are rising up, giving inspiration and lifeblood to the trade union movement in this country. The misogynist in chief has promoted, has in fact jump started the women's movement, the resurgence of the women's movement. Gun violence in the schools has moved millions of youth into the streets demanding government accountability. The war on black America has charged the resurgence of the black liberation movement. Black Lives Matter comes out against, in a strong way across the country, against state terror and murder by the police. There will be in May of this month a national assembly for black liberation in Durham, North Carolina, attempting to pull together the various fighting forces from the different battlefronts that black America must confront. Right here locally, every Monday, one minute, now more. You guys got the hook anyway. Every Monday at the, at the federal building, POP leads the Struggle Justice Mondays to expose the local instances of police brutality and police murder and to oppose the efforts of Trump to roll back the whole essence of this society. Latinos are rising in the context of the immigrants' rights movement and our sisters and brothers in Puerto Rico are fighting for self-determination in the fight back to rebuild their country in the wake of Hurricane Maria. In spite of the fact that they are citizens, but they've been given short shrift and second class status by the federal government of this country. In October, the Women's March Against the Pentagon will be held in Washington, D.C. to try to challenge that's in, in, initiated by the anti-war mom, Sidney Sheehan, to challenge that woman's energy and righteous indignation at the real enemy, the imperial system and in particular, to repatriate the sons and daughters of the country and the treasury of the country. Movement is good. But we've got a link, we've got a link. We've got to tie together the various fronts of struggle into a mighty movement of resistance. That's our task. Aim it at our common enemy, the system of imperialism. What is to be done? I say build on international solidarity at home and abroad, which is the spirit of May Day. Build. Unite the fight back. Unite the battlefronts. Defeat imperialism and struggle for a better social system that serves the masses and not the minority. We must fight for socialism, comrades, brothers and sisters. And we must rely on ourselves and neither Democrats nor Republicans who all have a stake in the empire that oppresses us. To close, I say long live the internationalist spirit of May Day, international worker solidarity. Workers of the world and oppressed people unite. We have nothing to lose but our chains and our world to gain. Power to the people. All right, thank you, Ray. People's Organization for Progress. And now let's make a little noise to the 50,000 Arizona teachers right now who are on strike for a fourth day who are at the Capitol right now as we speak, demanding that we tax the rich and corporations and fund our schools so kids can get an adequate, proper education that they need. All right. We got a couple comrades from the Green Party who are up next. Uh, first on my list, I have Teresa of the Green Party. Uh, we're going to have Diane come up first from the Green Party. All right, so let's make some noise for her. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Diane.
I am Oxley, and I am running for Congress in the 7th Congressional District on the Green Party line. I am running openly as a socialist because that is what we need right now. We need politicians who will fight for the working class now. We need politicians who are beholden to us and not their big money corporate donors and Wall Street. I am running to be a voice for the people and not big money. We need a Clean Dream Act now and paths to citizenship, not deportations. We need improved Medicare for all, not people dying from lack of health care. We need free public higher ed, not a school to prison pipeline. We need a real living wage, way more than $15 an hour, whose time has come and gone years ago. We need an end to homelessness. It is a travesty that we have a million homeless in the U.S and almost the same number of homes, empty. We need to fill those homes now. Occupy them. Occupy them, absolutely. Absolutely. We need clean, renewable energy. We need to end the use of fossil fuels now or yesterday, not 30 or 50 years from now. We need reparations and a plan to do away with hundreds of years of oppression and institutionalized systemic racism. We need an economy based on peace and justice, not endless wars and suffering. We know what a better world can look like. We can feel it. We can breathe it. We can see it in our collective minds. And it is beautiful. Let's build it together now. We can't wait. The world can't wait. Happy May Day. See you in the streets. All right, thank you, Diane. Next up, we have Javier, who is also part of the Essex County Green Party. Right. This is the deportation machine. Thank you very much. My name is Javier Vilca, chairman of Essex County chapter of the Green Party of New Jersey. And I want to thank Carl for having this and everyone here for coming here. We definitely support resistance deportation machine and their demand to shut down the Essex County Deportation Center. And I just want to go farther and I want to shut down all the deportation centers yeah. in America. Yeah, yeah. I want equality for every citizen here. Uh, I want the schools, <laughs> our children in our schools, to have their parents at home waiting for them when they come home. I want them to, to be able to drop their children off and not worry about getting picked up and never seen again. You know, this is not the kind of, kind of laws that I stand for and none of us here stand for. So thank you very much for this deportation machine. Green Party in New Jersey. Thank you very much for everyone here who's speaking, who's standing strong. Power to the people and you know, fight on. Happy May Day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Javier. And we are fighting to shut down the Essex County Ice Detention Center, but we're also looking to build a movement to shut down all detention centers. We're doing the work here first, but we are building a movement and we want to inspire others across the country to do the same, all right, until ICE is banished from our communities entirely. Yeah. Next up, we are having Teresa from the Green Party. Also, so let's give some more love for the Greens. Okay, so we're going to wait. We're going to push her back on the list a little bit. And we're going to have, he's been with the resistant deportation machine since the beginning. With Eric Luna, he's also part of Movement for Socialism. All right. Hey, 
Thanks for coming out to May Day. May Day is about the unity of the world working class. Our demands are aimed at unifying the movement here. I just want to start by reading what we are demanding. All who live here have equal rights. That means end all deportations, end all detentions, end all violations of due process rights, end all limits on the right to vote, to unionize, to organize, and to strike. Freedom of movement for all. That's the first right that we are fighting for. We say all who live here have the right to quality, free education, health care, transportation, housing, and clean energy. We will not be pitted against each other to fight for a share of inadequate public services. The government can and must provide quality services for all, paid for by taxing the rich and the corporations, slashing weapons spending, and ending all U.S. wars and occupations that force people to migrate. Right. Yeah, yeah. And finally, all who live here have the right to good jobs at good wages. We will not be pitted against each other to fight for a share of too few underpaid jobs, providing free quality education, health care, transportation, housing, and clean energy will also provide good jobs for all. So those are the demands that unify all of us. And as people have said, there are now struggles throughout the country. We have seen teachers on illegal strikes asserting their inalienable right to strike to withhold their labor in West Virginia, Oklahoma, Kentucky, and now in Arizona and Colorado. And I would like your agreement that we send to these groups messages of solidarity from the May Day rally in Newark saying that your struggle is our struggle and that the fight for quality, free education for all is part of the struggle that we are fighting for. Right. Can we agree to send those messages today by internet to these groups? All in favor? Any opposed? So we're going to send those messages. In addition, we are fighting, as people have said, for the immediate and permanent closure of the concentration camp for ICE that is here in Newark. And as part of that campaign, an independent committee, completely independent of the Democrats and the Republicans, is organizing to run our comrade Jay Arena as an independent candidate in the November election against Joe DiVenzenzo. And Joe D, the D stands for deportation and detention. He is the main obstacle. He was the one who contracted with ICE in the first place to get this concentration camp. He is the one who still defends it by saying he needs the money. And we are going to be running against him. Jay is going to be running against him on this platform, on the platform of closing the detention center. Right. Right. So if you, if any of you are Essex County registered voters, please see me and sign the petition to get him on the ballot. And we are going to be meeting, the independent committee is going to be meeting this Saturday, Chanco de Mayo, excuse my pronunciation, uh, the 5th of May at 2 o'clock at 157 um, Lafayette. So, we're going to start marching now. It's got like 10 minutes. Okay. Make an announcement we're going to start marching in 10 minutes, and we want to bring in, we're going to be marching through the Ironbound. We want to bring in the residents of the Ironbound. So we want everybody here to be calling out to people to join us, because that's what this is about, building the unity of the working class. Workers of the world, unite. Thank you. All right, thank you, Eric. 
And uh, when Eric and other speakers call the ICE detention center a concentration camp, they are not exaggerating. They are not being hyperbolic. People are being fed raw food at this concentration camp. They are being denied health care, both physical and mental. They are being held without lawyers for indefinite periods of time. They are being thrown in solitary confinement. I think it's completely fair to call that a concentration camp. All right. So we're going to have a couple more speakers. If you didn't get to speak up here, we're going to start our march at 4. We are going to be going to the ICE offices in downtown Newark. As Eric said, we will be going through the Ironbound. We will have more spots to speak as we are on our march, so we definitely want to accommodate everybody. Next up on my list, we have a comrade from Anik Bayan, Chessamin. Let's give a big hand for her. My name is Jessa. I am speaking on behalf of Bayan, which is an alliance of progressive Filipino groups in the U.S. I am here because of my mother, who migrated here for work. Many of you may also be here to work so that you can have a better chance to better opportunities. However, better opportunities does not mean living paycheck to paycheck. Better opportunities does not mean living in fear of being deported day in and day out. Better opportunities does not mean unstable contractual work. Our migration was a form of survival. But how can we survive in these conditions? We know that imperialism is the root of this issue. Capitalists are willing to risk the lives of the poor and the working class to maintain power and accumulate wealth. Uh -huh. We have seen it in the Philippines with President, President Duterte's three wars on the people, through the drug war, martial law, and the crackdown on activists. They are willing to displace the people to extract the mineral rich resources of ancestral lands. This allows mining corporations to come in Without national industrialization, the people are left to sell their labor power. Meanwhile, in the US, Trump's interests coincide with the elite as families are torn apart from each other by criminalization and deportation. How many more lives will these fascist regimes take? As Angela Davis said, I am no longer accepting the things I cannot change. I'm changing the things I cannot accept. It is time to unite. The power lies within the workers to overthrow these regimes. Today, we stand with the workers, those who are migrants, those who are undocumented, those who are burdened by living in the belly of the beast. We call for legalization of all and an end to all detention centers. We must unite to resist these fascist regimes for our liberation. In honor of Karl Marx's upcoming 200th birthday, workers of the wor world unite. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We would also like to invite you tonight in Jersey City at 7 p.m for a vigil in honor of F Father Frank Mark Ventura, who was a peace advocate and unjustly killed in the Philippines. Thank you. All right, let's give him a big hand. So I think we're going to have time for uh, one more speaker, and then we'll continue the speeches along the march route. And for anybody, who is interested in the exact route we're doing, we are going to be walking through the park, down the street right here to Ferry Street, and then we'll be marching down Ferry Street, up Market Street, we'll be making a left on Broad, and we'll be marching down Broad to the Federal Building, 
which is where ICE has some of their offices. And we're gonna let them know what we've been doing here today. And we're gonna let them know that we know they're in the community and that we want them out. All right. All right. So I think we're going to have someone from Kosecha come up and talk before we start our march. All right. And give a big warm welcome to Alejandro. He's been an amazing organizer with all the incredible work he's doing around driver's licenses and the RDM network. Thank you, Carl. The people united will never be defeated. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. Licenses yes, promises no. Licenses yes, promises no. Hi, so I'm gonna speak a little bit, right? And it's great to be here with all of you because in Cosecha we believe that change comes from the people. Right, can change come from the people that organize and make, provide solutions and fight for the struggles, right, of things that their communities need. And in Cosecha, for some of you that have been to our meetings, we always say at the end of the meeting, hasta que? Hasta la huelga. Hasta que? Hasta la huelga. Which means that we have the power to change. And with those a few words, I'm going to introduce our brother, Jose, uh, from Cosecha, who's going to say a few words, and I will translate for him. Jose, please, uh, welcome, Jose. Good okay. for me. El estar participando en este día internacional de blancos y demás grupos étnicos. Okay, to be here on May 1st as Cosecha Movement is for us to hear to join the fight for workers from Latin America, from the Caribbean, from Asia, from all over the world, and from the United States. El ser inmigrantes nos permite estar en los Estados Unidos contribuyendo para esta gran economía con nuestro trabajo digno y fuerte que desarrollamos en las grandes corporaciones e incorporaciones de los Estados Unidos. To be an immigrant here is to be contributing with our labor, right, to the economy of this country, to the well-being of, of this country. Eh, with dignity. También nosotros decimos que el estar en territorio continental es por la falta de oportunidades por las políticas neoliberales que impulsan nuestros gobiernos en nuestros países, en México, en Centroamérica y en otros países in the no ha funcionado la política económica neoliberal. So to be here is because of the neoliberal politics that have been implemented in our countries, in Mexico, in Latin America, in other countries, and neoliberal uh, policies that have not worked and have not functioned for the working class people people and has forced us to immigrate to the United States. Por ello, nosotros decimos de este meeting en conmemoración del Día Internacional del Trabajo que los, pol los políticos, los gobiernos latinoamericanos y de otros países en vías de desarrollo tienen que reorientar su política económica para evitar El flujo de inmigrantes hacia territorio continental. So in this day, International Workers' Day, so we say to the countries of Latin America and other countries that they got to refocus their economic policies to favor their people and stop the forced immigration. Aprovechamos también para denunciar las políticas 
de persecución en México de los dirigentes comunitarios por estar pidiendo cambios en la política económica, social, cultural en nuestros países, en México en concreto. Also we are here to announce the prosecution of community organizers in Mexico and in other countries. Para terminar, desde este foro del Día Internacional del Trabajo, denuncio al gobierno mexicano para que libere a nuestro compañero, el licenciado Librado Baños Rodríguez, preso político en el estado de Oaxaca, y desde acá demandamos su pronta liberación. And here I demand the Mexican government uh, to liberate our political prisoner, our brother. Uh, Mr. Baños Rodriguez, liberado, that has been put in jail uh, by the Mexican government and we demand his liberation. Por eso, para culminar, decimos, hasta la huelga, hasta la huelga, hasta la huelga, arriba los trabajadores latinoamericanos y norteamericanos. I lied, we're actually going to squeeze one more speaker in because he can't march with us and we want to make sure we get to hear him. Uh, give it up for Matt and he is from ILPS. All right. Hello everyone and happy May Day. Uh, my name is Matt. I'm here as a member of ILPS, the International League of People Struggle, an anti-imperialist alliance of over 150 people's organizations in over 30 countries. So it may not be easy to tell because I'm not a very expressive speaker, but you know, every day it's just frustrating and angry because uh, the work we do, we fight against you know, the most expansive and oppressive system in human history and it gets hard to keep going sometimes and it's hard to keep up hope, uh, which is why today I want to give some examples showing why it's so crucial that we have an internationalist and anti-imperialist perspective in our movements. So for one, as we fight for the humanity of Syrian refugees to be allowed in this country and live, we must also fight against the U.S. imperialist war that has caused so much devastation and resulted in this refugee crisis. As we fight for the rights and welfare of undocumented migrants and workers in the U.S., we must also fight against the aggression in Latin America that fuels this cruel system of forced migration. As we fight for an end to gun violence, purposeful state violence against black America, we simultaneously fight for the same abroad, an end to U.S. military aid that fuels genocide in the Philippines, Palestine, Yemen, Syria, and numerous other places. What I mean to highlight by this is that it's the same forces that oppress us all around the world, here and abroad, and there's only one solution, international solidarity against imperial U.S. imperialism. So as one way of doing this, I invite you and your organizations to join ILPS and be part of this beautiful movement for, of international solidarity with the global working class. As we are all joined here today in resistance here in Union Square around the world as the international working class. This resistance is our unceasing source of optimism and hope to build a new world free of all forms of oppression. Long live the international working class and happy May Day to all. Thanks. All right, thank you, Matt. So we are going to start our march pretty soon, uh, right now actually. I have a couple of, of announcements. We are going to keep to the sidewalks, all right? We will be accompanied by the police officers over there. And we are going to be going down Ferry Street. We want to chant really loudly because we want people in this community to know that we are with them and we support them and we stand in solidarity with them. We have some lovely, uh, a lovely resist the deportation machine banner over here that we need comrades who are interested in helping carry as we march. And we will have more speakers when we get to the Peter Grodino Federal Building. All right, so, and if you didn't get to speak yet and you want to say some words there, we will definitely be happy to add you to our list.